Hey, listen up. If you are a mom raising a child with extra needs and you also struggle with anxiety, maybe you've been diagnosed with anxiety and are uh, taking medicine, dealing with panic attacks, or maybe you just know that you constantly live in a state of, of worry, right? You feel that elevated level of worry. Um, this is for you. I'm gonna share with you how exercise can either be a really good thing for you or it can be harmful and actually elevate and increase your symptoms of anxiety. And I wanna start by saying that this is pretty common. This is pretty common when you have a child with extra needs, especially with more complex medical diagnoses or developmental delays, and you have this sense of uncertainty about your child's future and you know all these added stressors, it is incredibly common. Like I can't even believe how, when I started talking to moms about this, um, how many moms actually struggle with this and are um, you know, taking medicine to help correct this uh, because it is incredibly difficult to, to be worried about your child all the time and uncertain about the future and, um, and it, it doesn't go away, right? It doesn't go away for us as special needs moms. And so, you know, living in that, that constant state of anxiety, not to mention everything we've dealt with the last few uh, couple years with the pandemic, like um, things have gotten pretty out of hand. And, and this is a really hard place to live, right? If, if you're in this place, like me and many of the other moms, um, it, it really has an impact just on your general well-being, you, your ability to uh, sleep, right? Your ability to think clearly, your ability to make decisions from a place of like sound thinking and not just panic. Um, and if, if you have dealt with panic attacks, this is really tough to um, be in situations that might actually be triggers for you. Um, and you know, that either social anxiety or anxiety about just, you know, for me, uh, I'll just share a little bit of my story real quick before we jump into talking about exercise. Like this has come out for me, um, through, uh, some medical experiences that we had with my son. And like anytime there is a medical appointment on the radar, like even <laughs> several weeks away for the next few weeks, like my anxiety is just ramped up because I know this is coming. That's a big trigger for me. Um, and so when, when it comes to exercise, right, we know that it is helpful for us to exercise and that there's lots of research on how exercise helps to reduce our stress levels and, and just for our overall health, right? This is something that we need to do. But as a fitness coach and as somebody who has dealt with anxiety myself, I have seen that um, exercise can be really beneficial when you have anxiety or it can actually be harmful and, and make things worse. And so I want to teach you a couple things today that are going to give you some action steps if you're thinking about starting on an exercise program or if you are exercising right now and you have anxiety and are still dealing with a lot of these symptoms, ways that maybe you can tweak and modify your exercise program so that it better um, serves you and, and your goals, not just physically, but also mentally uh, with anxiety. Um, so I have, I have helped a lot of moms with this. Like I said, my story is I've been in fitness for a very long time. I love high intensity exercise. Like you would call me like a cardio junkie. I've run, I've run marathons. Um, I love aerobics and just that feeling of, um, instant good after a high intensity exercise. But when I was going through, um, my seasons of really high anxiety with my son and then, uh, over the last couple of years that I was dealing with panic attacks, all of a sudden what was happening with me was I would do these workouts and I would feel good for a little bit, but then my anxiety was revved up and um, I was having trouble sleeping. I was having trouble uh, like coming down and really regulating my anxiety and it just wasn't working for me and I couldn't figure it out until I... Um, read some research on this and, and started talking to other people about this. And the thing is, with anxiety, we really struggle to live in the present moment, right? We're either kind of wrapped up in the future or wrapped up in the past. And and being present is very difficult. And so I was going into these high-intensity workouts and just 
um, almost like trying to escape out of my mind and not paying attention to my body. I ended up like overtraining and hurting myself um, and, and being outside of this uh, realm of tolerance, I would say, was not serving my anxiety. So when it comes to exercise, um, there's three things that we really need to pay attention to. Number one, is your training helping you to stay grounded? Is your movement helping you stay grounded in the present moment? And this can come down to a couple of things. Like yoga, um, if you've never tried yoga, this is incredibly beneficial for anxiety because one of the pillars, the foundational pillars of yoga is listening and tuning into your body. Um, and I love yoga, I practice yoga and encourage this uh, for moms just for that practice of mindfulness and embodied movement where you're, you're teaching your brain to pay attention to how you're feeling, where you're at right now, the environment that you're in, um, your, where your body is in space and time. But yoga isn't the only way to actually do that. You can be embodied and really grounded in the present moment no matter what you're doing. Um, if you're going out for a run, you know, often it, it, it feels really good to put a podcast in or put music on or, you know, be distracted by something else while we're exercising, especially if you don't really love exercising. It's like, okay, I just don't want to pay attention to how this feels. Um, however, sometimes that can contribute more to anxiety because you're not present with your body. And so you can practice embodied exercise no matter what you're doing. If you're running, that would uh, look like just paying attention to how am I breathing while I run? Am I taking full deep breaths? Um, you know, where is my body? How does it feel in my body while I'm running? Feeling the breeze when you're running, um, feeling your foot strike and, and being present in that. So powerful. Um, I love strength training. This is one of my favorites. And um, as, as a coach, uh, I actually, teach strength training in an embodied way where while we're doing exercise we're talking about where we are activating different muscles right can you feel your back can you feel your arms um and so i i coach this way and you can do strength training you can do whatever it is that you want to do for exercise in an embodied way so this is really one of the most important things when it comes to exercising in a way that is beneficial for anxiety the second thing though is really watching your intensity levels because if you are prone to panic attacks, actually training at really high intensity levels can trigger uh, that, that panic uh, anxiety response in your body. Because when, we, when we're dealing with anxiety, if you, if you have panic attacks, the things that start to happen is physiologically is that your heart rate starts to speed up, your breath starts to become more shallow, you know that feeling, right? If you if you <laughs> really can't catch your breath, uh, and and so high intensity exercise really mimics that, right? When we go super high in our in our heart rate, um, it it releases cortisol, our stress hormone, similar to when we are in high anxiety, and this can actually make it harder for you throughout the day to. Uh, regulate and, and come down from that. It, it can feel like a panic attack when you do that high intensity exercise and leave you just kind of reeling for hours um, and throughout the rest of the day. So I found that there's a real sweet spot here in, uh, in cardio training. It's that doing a little bit and focusing on moderate exercise um, in small bits is really, really powerful. In my program, we do 20 minute daily workouts. And these are interval workouts where you have um, little heart rate spikes and then you recover and little heart rate spikes and recover. And so you're getting up into that training zone to improve fitness, but then you also have that time to rest and regulate um, before going into the next one. And, and by shortening these workouts and doing a little bit every day, it leads you to um, just having that daily bit of movement, that daily bit of mindfulness, that daily exercise, which is great for stress management, which helps anxiety, um, but also helps you avoid maybe feeling like you have to do like a big 30, 45 hour long workout that can really drain you. And um, like we talked about, like 
elevate your anxiety versus helping heal it. So embodied movement, right? Getting in a program where you exercise, where you focus on how you're feeling in that present moment, avoiding really high intensity, really long exercise sessions that are gonna shoot you out in that um, anxiety mode. And then getting in a setting that's really comfortable for you, right? Um, Some of us have anxiety when we go into new places, um, being in a gym or being in a class where, you know, it's a new environment, we're not sure like who the people are in there or how it's going to go. Or maybe we feel like if, if we get uncomfortable or we get too tired, we don't have permission to leave that space. Um, or you just don't know, you're working with a coach that you don't know. Maybe that, that coach is going to be somebody who's going to like push you and push you and push you and always be like, come on, more, more, more. And that honestly is like the worst possible thing for somebody who deals with anxiety because of what we were just talking about. Like you want to work with somebody, whether it's a trainer or an instructor who is going to help you tune into yourself and not just push you and push you and push you, which is going to rev up your anxiety levels. So if you go into a gym setting, you know, make sure that you have a really trusted environment. But for a lot of us, honestly, having the freedom of the home workout is really, really great because we're in a comfortable environment. Um, You have permission to walk away and stop at any time if you need to regulate and take a break. And it's just easier, honestly, to make this more of a daily habit if you're not having to get out and go somewhere. Um, So I'm a big fan of the home workouts, but this can be tough when you're just there doing this on your own. And so getting some type of accountability structure around you will help you tremendously in setting up that habit. So where do we start? Like if you're brand new and and you know that you wanna start some exercise, but you're, you're not sure how to get started and you're worried about how this might impact your anxiety and and react with that, um, here's a couple things that you can do. Number one, start really small, right? I love, like I said, the 20 minute workout, but honestly, if you wanna start with just five minutes of exercise, 10 minutes of exercise, and just pay attention to how you feel and how your body responds to that, you will know if you are pushed out of your zone of tolerance right away. Right, so you can test the waters with short workouts and start small. Um, The second thing, like we just talked about, find something or someone that you're comfortable with, a really trusted uh, environment, somebody who gets it, somebody who um, understands your struggles with anxiety and is not going to push you, again, out of your zone of tolerance. So if you're hiring a trainer, going to a class, just making sure that that is somebody um, that understands that and, and is trustworthy and knows how to handle that. Um, and finding finding movement that you are comfortable with as well, right? What do you enjoy doing? What If, if yoga doesn't uh, call to you, what is something that you are interested in? Is it, is it kickboxing? Is it strength training? Is it, are you, and what are your goals? Um, and find find an environment that's going to be really supportive and comfortable for you. And this is actually what led me to come online and work with other special needs moms is because I found that so often with the unique struggles that we have with stress and our kids needs and just all of the complex issues that go into our life. um, it, It was really beneficial when I started talking to other moms to have somebody there who just gets it. Somebody who is living and walking this um, right alongside you. And so in my programs, I do work specifically with special needs moms because uh, I love creating that safe space for our community. So if you need support and you're looking for that, let me know because I would love to chat with you about the different ways that I help moms and what might be a good starting jump off point for you. Um, And then this last one, it's probably gonna sound a little bit funny, but when you start something new, Find something that is not a long-term commitment. And I know, I know this is uh, interesting, but honestly, like there are, I've been in the fitness industry for a very long time and gyms and different fitness programs will often ask you or incentivize you to make a long-term commitment to something. And I found when you deal with anxiety, 
jumping in and committing to something long term is usually not a good idea unless you've tried it for a little while first because it may not be a right environment it may not be a good fit for you and if it is a triggering environment or just doesn't feel good um, you don't want to lock yourself into something long term so if you're signing up for something online um, if you're going to hire you know a trainer or a coach or join a gym stick with uh, that month to month option, at least at the beginning, so that you can test the waters and not feel like you are stuck in something that is not the right fit for you. So this is, this is what I have found works for anxiety and exercise, especially if you are a special needs mom. And so if you want support in this area and you are looking for something, let me know. I have a, a program of 20 minute workouts. Um, I am trained in um, em embodiment and, and coaching in such a way that we work on focusing on the present moment. Uh, these are interval workouts, so they are not super high intensity. They have been the perfect fit for so many of these moms who are looking for uh, ways to improve their fitness, improve their strength, um, and, and do it in a way that is going to honor your needs and give you the space to listen to your body and do this in a way that works for you. And finally, like to get connected with other moms because we it's hard to do this alone. It's just, it's hard to feel alone. And, and when you get connected with other moms and have the support of a community that's doing this with you, you will truly be unstoppable. And we believe in supporting each other and uplifting each other. And it is just a really positive, uh, wonderful environment. So we're headed into July really soon. And um, our July program is gonna launch. And if you are interested in trying out some of this, we do no long-term commitment. You can do a month, um, two months, and just see if this might be a good fit for you. So if you're curious about that, I want you to leave a comment here, whether you are on Instagram or here on Facebook with me. Um, and I'm gonna reach out and just give you a couple of workouts to try first because again, like you need to try it. You need to see if it's a good fit. You need to feel the difference of having a coach who's coaching for people with anxiety and, and complications. Um, and then if it's a good fit, I will share with you what it looks like to come in and join our community for a month to try it out. So leave a comment, let me know. And if you have found something else that you are doing that is a great fit for your anxiety, leave a comment here so that we can all know like what is working for us, what are you doing that works, and, um, and share the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have as well. So as always, I'm cheering you on. You guys have a great day. and. I